Hello, welcome to Sunday School Time here at Temple Baptist Church. We are in a brand new quarter study. If you do not have a book and you would like to have one, call the church office. We'll get one mailed out to you. I can't believe this is already the 1st of September. Uh, time, what do they say, time flies when you're having fun. We must be having a whole lot of fun this year because it is... Uh, it is really going by, but we welcome you to our class this morning, and we hope uh, uh, as we get into the book of Mark, that's what we're into uh, this quarter, and Mark is going to, actually, he's going to introduce us to somebody that is very important, and you, uh, all relationships uh, start, or have something in common, I think you could, maybe we could say that in, in one way or another. You were introduced to a person by someone, either another person of uh, our, uh, our yourself, or maybe family members who are older than you. And it, you know, it may be difficult to go back and just find out when you were introduced to the person, our people, or whatever it is you know. But uh, you know, but ha relationships have some kind of an introduction because each has a beginning. Point. And uh, uh, being introduced to someone has the capacity to change lives. So, uh, you know, the introduction that Mark is going to make here to, today in this study, he's going to introduce the most important person <laughs> that was ever introduced. And uh, I know that probably all of us at some time or another has uh, watched the inauguration of a president of the United States. You know, we have television access to all of this and we're you know we're able to witness all the fanfare and uh, uh, that is associated with the important uh, celebration but uh, Jesus began his public ministry as, as Mark is going to introduce to us without any extraordinary display of the uh, uh, that are afforded to it the president of the United States or the kings or other world leaders and you know he didn't make his speech in a a wearing a robe or a crown or anything like that he came into the world you know but however the introduction that mark gives us to turns out to be anything but ordinary and uh, you know it's a unequal display of uh, uh he's affirming the underscore of being beginning his public ministry. That's what, what Mark is going to introduce us to. He's going to, to introduce that. And so as we begin the study of the, of the gospel of Mark, you know, it's going to reflect on Jesus' identity, who he is. We're going to talk about his baptism a little bit and the, the heavenly affirmation that comes at his baptism that introduces him as the eternal Son of God. And, and so... <laughs> you know, as God has uh, revealed, you know, ask God, we need to ask God to reveal himself to you or us in a special way. And so we can appoint others, we can just point others to Jesus Christ. And so uh, our text today is Mark chapter 1, verse 13 verses. And just a little uh, background on uh, what's uh, going on here, you know, for centuries the Jewish people had been longing for the Messiah to arrive, but uh, they were, uh, you know, they were really expecting a military leader who would free them from the uh, Roman rule, and you know, so many of them, I think, really missed the significance of Jesus once he burst onto the scene, and uh, you know, you know, Mark and, and earlier followers of of Jesus, you know provided what many believe, and Mark may be the one that provided the first written account of his ministry and the turning points that he had, his presence that, that is created in human history. And, uh, you know, one of the signatures that they say about Mark's writing is his commitment to action. He, he, he's committed to action. Every chapter of the gospel, you know, sets the tone, even in offering a brief introduction about John the Baptist, he doesn't spend a whole lot of time talking about John the Baptist and his ministry, but Mark quickly moves his emphasis to the superiority of Jesus Christ. So he's he's introducing Jesus 
and, and you know, after setting the stage and all that, you know, he, he begins to focus on the work and, and words of Jesus and how they, you know, uh, just validated his claim that he is the Messiah. You know, uh, you know, he doesn't get into information about Jesus' birth or childhood, but, but you know, Mark gets his picture as a Messiah on the move, and he's he's on the move. His baptism, the significance of being of beginning his earthly work, and uh, you know, followed quickly by a temptation in the wilderness. We're going to see this right here this morning in this lesson that Jesus is immediately led away of the Spirit into the wilderness. So we're going to see that, and you know, you know, Jesus was really the Messiah. Uh, you know, the, uh, it reveals his you know, special relationship with the Father while he was, uh, you know, he was human human in, in, in concept, but he was still the Father, he was still the Son, and, and, and Jesus embraces his role as the one sent by God to redeem the world. So he, he does that, and so we're, we're seeing this, we're looking at the background that, that Mark is setting for, the, for us, and you know, from these episodes that we have here in our lesson today, you know, Jesus jumps into his ministry, doesn't he? And we, you know, we would say with both feet hit the ground running, you know, preaching the good news of salvation, calling disciples to, to follow him. And so, you know, the first chapters, you know, uh, really the entire gospel of Mark reveals Jesus as a doer. He focuses on Jesus' message and his ministry along with all the teachings and, and all of that. And, and, and all this, I think, leads to the point where the picture, you know, per, accumulates or, or ends as the, the death, burial, and resurrection, Mark's final chapter. He, he covers all of it, and, and, you know, and Mark's writing highlights the importance of following Jesus. That's what, it, you know, that's what we get today in our lesson, you know, not just physically, but also spiritually, as the Messiah, Jesus served as the bridge connecting God to humanity or connecting humanity to God, I think would be a better way of putting, finding new relationships with the Father requires loyalty and commitment, committed disciples. So, you know, that's, that's one of the things that Mark is doing here for us, I, you know, just the Disciples were not just students learning at the feet of Jesus. You know, that's a good place to learn. We have a good place to learn today. It's called the Bible. We're right at the feet of Jesus when we're reading our Bible, reading His Word. You know, they were also followers chosen to spread His message around the world. Are we not chose to do that today? We are to be at the feet of Jesus. We are to spread His message around. And so, you know, after chapter 1, Mark is just going to continue to prevent provide evidence of Jesus as the Messiah. You know, the physical healing he done, the, you know, the controversy concerning him for giving sin and all those things. And, you know, Jesus, he demonstrated that he was Messiah and that he's worthy of being followed. So you know, that's just a brief understanding of the context of, uh, of what we're going to be studying and what Mark is going to point out here uh, in his gospel, as we look at verses uh, uh, 1 through 13 today, and we'll talk just a little bit about each verse. We'll try not to uh, take a whole lot of time, but uh, Mark starts out his gospel, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I think, uh, you know, setting, uh, uh, the setting for Mark here is to me is the gospel is all about Jesus, isn't it? From even the very first verse, verse, Mark lets his readers know that the narrative is about the gospel. Well, it didn't, you know, it didn't begin by, you know, he didn't share Jesus' birth like we talked about, but, you know, he's, he's emphasizing his earthly ministry. And, you know, a little background about Mark, John Mark, whatever you want to call him, you know, he he was uh, he was discipled by Peter. He's listened to a lot of the teachings of Peter. He uh, he he really had a a little falling back in his life, but he comes back and uh, you know. Uh, but then, then these these first th thirteen verses here in Mark, you know, includes a you know introduction of Jesus as the Son of God, 
the prophecy fulfilled through John the Baptist and the beginning of Jesus' early ministry, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there, there it is, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets. Here's what the, you know, the prophets has, has said about that. Uh, you know, the, the Old Testament prophecies in Malachi and Isaiah, you know, they had both predicted uh, that God would send someone as a forerunner to the Messiah, and this is who it is. This is John the Baptist. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Uh, you know, and I, I just think Mark's uh, reference to these prophets was important uh, to his message because they affirm that Jesus' coming was a part of God's plan all along. The ancient prophets, those prophets of old, had pre predicted that the Messiah would arrive and the coming of his, for, uh, his forerunner hundreds of years earlier. You know, so they, they had been predicting this. They had been saying that, that he, is, he is coming and he has arrived. And Mark is introducing him as the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's the one who have been telling you about. He's the one you've been expecting. You've been expecting a, a emperor or some warrior to come and, and free you. You've been thinking the wrong way. Here's the one that has come to set you free, truly free. And when Jesus sets us free, we are free indeed. And so uh, as we look at verses 4 through 8, you know, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for their mission of sin. And there went out unto him all the land of Judah and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel hair and with a girdle of skin about his loin. And he'd eat locusts and wild honey and preached, saying, there cometh one mightier than I am after me, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloosen. Indeed, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And so, you know, I, I kind of wonder sometimes, you know, the in the wilderness, and I think my, uh, maybe Mark is emphasizing that John's ministry takes place in the wilderness. The, and, and the wilderness a lot of times is often referred to uh, in reference to uh, Israel, you know, the, they're wandering in the, the wilderness. But I think it also points out, you know, that God's redemption that it ultimately leads his people out. We're, we're let out of the world. We're not in the, you know, we're let out of this. John was known for his baptism and, and, and many religious leaders practiced baptism, but a few did as John you know, fully emerging the individual in water. And, the, you know, the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. I think most Jews probably at that time uh, uh, were just ceremonial washings. The, you know, the, the ritual bath, these washings served as a public uh, confession. They needed to get right with God. Not that they were right with God, but they needed to get right with God. And, and, and the Gentiles also wishing to adopt the... Uh, uh, Jerusalem went through these cleansing ceremonies and, uh, you know, one-time events symbolized the rejection of the pagan practices that they were doing. And, you know, so ba John's baptism was uh, away from the ritual practice of the temple. It wasn't like that. It was, his baptism was not focused on keeping the tradition as these others were that mission that I mentioned, but the need of repentance, you know, you're being baptized here to realize that you need to repent. And, you know, John is focused on the need of the remission of sin. And the one who was coming, the Messiah, would baptize them with the Holy Spirit rather than water. Those who were, uh, those who were baptized give evidence of a changed life, but the baptism to come would carry significance of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, and you know, all the land of Judea, man, that's a great number. Great, but great numbers were flocking to the countryside to hear John preach. And so, you know, for many, it wouldn't be an easy trip since the River Jordan is more than 20 miles from Jerusalem and including a, a descent of 4,000 feet. 
So those who uh, traveled to hear him were committed to hearing what he had to say, weren't they? They weren't, they weren't just playing around. Went out, suggest the people were continually coming. You know, John's clothing was not what we would think of. I think he was kind of dressed like what we would think of the Old Testament prophets, camel hair, clothed with camel hair. And, you know, John was just, uh, you know, one, one might think John was a crazy man. He wasn't, he said. And he makes it plain, too, that he said, you know, I am not worthy to loosen the shoes uh, uh, and stoop down and unloose these sandals. He said, I'm not... I'm not even worthy as a, a slave that I would take down and take my master. I'm not even worthy to do that to Jesus. You know, he's the one that's coming. He's the one that's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. And, you know, he point, he's pointing towards a day when the Messiah would pour out his Holy Spirit on the believers. And, you know, John's baptism was for the body. Well, Christ is for the soul, the, the redeeming of the soul. So, you know, as, as Mark puts this out, John uh, puts out there, uh, there cometh one mightier than I after me, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And so, uh, you know, just uh, uh, moving uh, right along here in this lesson, we go to uh, verse 9. And it came to pass in those days, that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the waters, he saw the heavens open and a spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit drive him into the wilderness and was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Now, like I said, you know, Jesus would have probably traveled around 50 miles from Nazareth to reach the Jordan River. Now, I, I don't know, maybe some other scholars know, just don't know exactly the location where uh, Jesus was baptized, but, you know, you know, we kind of speculate, I guess. We read between the lines sometimes that maybe John was uh, preaching near a crossroad that people had to use in order to uh, get to him. And, it, and I think maybe of, of interest also to note that Jordan was not used for pur purification purposes as we, uh, you know, talked about earlier. But, you know, and, and Jesus didn't have to be baptized for repentance. He, he was completely sinless but he chose to be baptized out of obedience for the will of the father and straightway he came out of the water mark used these words i think more than and 40 times in his gospel and i think this emphasizes the urgency throughout his gospel he just uses that immediately after jesus was baptized some things happened don't they first the heavens opened and that's a part of prophecy in Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 1. The you know, prophet announced that God would rend the heavens. Isaiah prayed that God would come down and reside with humanity. God is answering Isaiah's prayer here. And then next, the Holy Spirit descends like a dove. You know, and the Spirit uh, didn't just rest on Jesus. It empowered everything that Jesus did in his ministry and his life. You know, the Holy Spirit indwells us. The Holy Spirit is there uh, to, uh, you know, uh, make, it, make us understand or help us understand the gospel. You know, Jesus, in verse 11, my beloved son, we go back to our opening verse where Mark has declared that Jesus is the son of God and God answered, he's well pleased. I'm well pleased with Jesus' faithfulness. You know, maybe this... I don't know if this is the first time that God had spoke audibly to his people in the last 400 years. There was that 400 silent years there. But I think he left no doubt that Jesus was co-equal to him. Uh, the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit means that each member of the Trinity participated in this event. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit who had just descended on Jesus now drives him into the wilderness 
you know, the wording is strong here, I think. It indicates that the Spirit was insist, insisting that Jesus go. Jesus has been empowered by the Spirit, and he obeys. And, you know, the, the 40 days, that number appears throughout Scripture, you know, including Noah, uh, Israel, Moses, Elijah. And, and, you know, if you want to find more details about that, you can with the wild beast. You know, I think Mark may be the only gospel that mentions the wild beast. Wild animals, I think, would have been common in the desert at that time, and the Greek word suggests Jesus was not afraid of them, but he was, you know, he was executing, I guess, or his authority over them. So as we look at this lesson today and we think about what uh, uh, Mark is uh, uh, challenging us to do here, you know, we just need to, I think, draw our attention to the fact that Mark said Jesus come up out of the water. He'd done that. You know, there's a time when, you know, the time when all three of the, the Trinity was there. And so, uh, you know, as we, as we look at this today, you know, Jesus is still there. Have you been introduced to him? Have you had a proper introduction to Jesus? Now, have an introduction to somebody, you get to meet somebody, sometimes you get to know them personally, don't you? So that's the, the thing to me today is, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Have you met him personally? Do you know him? If not, listen to the introduction that Mark is making here, that Jesus is the Son of God, he is the Savior of the world, and he wants to he wants all to be saved, and we... You know, here at Temple, we invite you to come and be a part of our Sunday school classes live. If you can't, we, we appreciate you watching us. And let us know that you're watching. But giving us a, uh, make a response or something. If you don't like what I say, tell me. may not change it, but you can mention that anyhow. But uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so come and be a part of our family here at Temple, our, our services on Sunday. We have our first service at 8 o'clock, then our Sunday school time's at 9, next service at 10. Uh, we meet Sunday nights at 6, Wednesday night at 7. May God bless you is our prayer.